Okay. Hey guys, it's Jenny Wallach with Wallach Group in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Welcome back to our Agent Success Secrets, and I am excited to introduce you to my friend Laura Gillot. Did I say it right? Yes, yeah, you said it wonderful. <laughs> I know you get that all the time. We got to meet years ago at a Keller Williams annual event. I believe it was family, family reunion. And what's great is that she, just like me, is awesome at actually having follow-up after events. And so we were in each other's databases all these years. And yes. recently we got to be together in a lab, a Keller Williams yes. lab with Gary and Jay and Josh. It was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> well, now everyone also has probably seen you on the stage at Mega Live, and there you got to share a lot of what we'll chat about today, if that works for you, Laura. Yeah, that works great. Well, let's have you start off by just sharing all your info, where you're from, and uh, maybe even your production last year and your big goal for this year. Well, okay, so that's exciting. So I am from Lebanon, Oregon. Um, we are in a town about 15,000, 16,000 people. Um, we service uh, Lynn and Benton County, which is a couple counties that are in our county and one beside us. Um, our nearest town is about 13 miles away, either going kind of north or going south from us. So we have, in between our, our cities, we have uh, rye grass fields and farm ground. So it's not highly populated for here. Um, I started the business in 1992. So I'm 26 years in the business this year. Joined Keller Williams in 2011. Uh, best thing I ever did. Um, from there was able to deassemble my team, reassemble the team. We're now about 25 plus people. And um, we really enjoy um, being able to have a mega agent office in our town and um, providing a great service to our, um, our, our people. Yeah. Um, our, our, yeah, our great, our great community here, which is yeah. what we strive to do. And we are able to do a lot of community events and have a lot of fun and really enjoy our success. Last year, we were able to help 523 families um, buy or sell real estate here in our area. So it's been fun. And a majority of those sales were from Lebanon. So I think I've got some numbers here, like 317, which is about 35% of our business um, or 35% market share is from Lebanon. Wow. Yeah. I, I laugh and, and shake my head all because I'm so proud of you. That's amazing. And 523 families. Yes. In your 16,000 population town. Yes. yes. So let's go there. First and foremost, you joined Keller Williams in 2011. Did it just blow your mind? Had you ever dreamt that at that time? What was your production then? So our production there, I remember the first year coming into Keller Williams, we said we want to do 151 transactions. And everyone laughed when I said it because no one was really doing over 100 transactions. And we were doing somewhere around 100, but 151 was like going to be, you know, having again our, our production level. So I remember saying that and laughing. And then after that year, we hit that. And then each year we just kept building and building and right. building upon that. But I remember that first year, that 151, you remember the market kind of slowed down during that time of 2011. We were just starting to, yeah. starting to ramp back up, but we didn't know we were ramping up at the time. So, um, so anyhow, it was, it was great fun. And now from there, if someone said, well, you'd be doing 500 transactions in a year, I would never have thought that that was even physically possible. And it is, and it's easier today than it was back then when we did 151. So let's talk about how in the world is it easier? <laughs> well, definitely being surrounded by talent and having systems and, and when anytime we have a problem or an issue or drop a ball or there's a crack in it, we try to correct it and put a system in place so it doesn't happen again. So as we're able to move forward, um, we're able to make things better for the client, smoother, we have the right people in place, there's checklists involved. Um, it, it's just a very smooth transaction all the way through because we have um, we have learned from our mistakes and we have put systems in place so it doesn't happen again. And it, that just, it's very helpful um, to our clients and to us that we know we have systems in place that can make things go very smoothly. How in the world back in 2011 or even earlier in your career being in real estate for so long, did you know that you were going to set out to just dominate? I mean, was that a goal? 
Um, not so much. I just wanted to be a good agent. So at the very beginning, I was just, I wanted to be there. I wanted to be there for my clients. I wanted to be a great agent, a great resource for them. So that's what I was striving to do. And I never really envisioned even um, growing to the size or opening my own office or doing anything to that nature. I just really wanted to serve my clients. And so it wasn't until after getting into coaching um, that it helped me maps coaching that, you know, by myself, I could be a listing agent on my team and I could serve about 140 people with the systems we had in place and be able to provide them good service and to touch them and to make them happy. But the problem was there's more than 140 people that need um, service in our town. So then the other 100, whatever measure it was, at that time I think I had about 15% market share, 20% market share, but the rest of the people were going to other agents. And so my coach was like, you know, instead of being the value resource for your clients, why don't you be the value resource for your team? And then, and then be able to touch more people. So we were able then to go through and teach the systems to our, um, to our team and then allow them to be able to serve them at the same, um, same level as I was serving them. And now we're doing, you know, 300 sellers instead of doing 140 sellers. That is awesome. I'm going to say that again. Instead of being a valuable resource for your sellers, your yes. client, instead yes. be a valuable resource for your team. Yes. Yes. Wow. What a shift in mindset and how powerful is that? And really, you just had to get out of the way. Yes, that is totally what had to happen. And so, and it took her some pride and prodding to do that because I love my clients. I love being their valuable resource. I love um, being able for them to come to me and, and solve their problems. And I still can do that in my role. I just have a co-agent that's going out and helping provide the market analysis, providing the marketing, helping me with the weekly communication with those sellers. And I'm still there and I'm only a call or text away if they need me but they can rely on their agent that has been highly selected and trained to be able to take care of them at a higher level than even I could because I was probably spread a little too thin. Well, and, and clearly in a very small town, people talk. Yes. And relationships matter. So yes. there's even more accountability around building a team based on relationships. So I know that when we, when we recently hung out, you shared with me your playbook. Yes. Yes. And that is a, an awesome systemized way. So why don't you share with everyone how you map out your year of what you're going to do to love on people? Yeah. So we do that at the beginning of the year. We're able to put out our events for the entire year, which is great. And then before we used to just kind of wing it, like we had our events, we did every time I had everything between my ears, you know, how it worked. Ran. I just would delegate things to the team. They would take care of things uh, for me. Um, we would get it all done, but you know, a lot of times there, we'd forget things or the year before we forgot that, oh yeah, we did that last year. It didn't work out. We needed to make certain that we put something into place. So um, again, my coach, Mandy, said, you know, why don't we get a playbook for these things so you can have a systemized list of every event you have, and that way you can delegate it out that you're not having to tell them what you need to do, but they can take the list, the admin staff and the success team can take the list and, and just be able to, from start to finish, do it without you. So I was like, okay, we can do that. But of course that took time, but we just did it at every event. We kind of prepared our playlist before the event. And then we meet after the event, we figure out what worked and what didn't work at the event, changed it to playbook. So the next year it's tuned up for the following year. And so, and we were able to do that with each one of our events. And now things run so much more smooth um they basically I can just show up before I was having to be there because you know you have new people in all the time um, for admin staff and so if they weren't there last year they may not even know exactly what their event looks like so now they're able to come and look at the photos that we have of the event um, look at the playbook you know we have a director of operations which was a great um, person to my team uh, Lori and she can help run all that and now I can just kind of show up which is awesome. I, you know, we, as these mega agent leaders of our teams, we are at the place we are for a reason. We've probably got really big, amazing ideas <laughs> and we are not always the best at implementing. No. So what an amazing system, a playbook, it's documented. Everyone knows how to, how to play the game. I love that. Yes. You know, Laura, yes. something you shared um, from the stage that we loved and we added it to our, our client Pi Day was the, you want to share what you add to get asked yeah. for the referral? 
Yeah, so before we would just give away pies, and so we've given away, you know, started like 200, 400, 600 pies, and they would just come get their pies, and they would leave, and we'd get occasional referrals from that, but what we decided, and what was kind of pushed on me, was like, you need to ask for referrals at these events, and I'm like, well, how am I going to ask? So then we decided that we would kick in the idea, if you can whip us up a referral, that we will throw in a can of whipped cream. If you, yeah. And when we call, so we call about a month ahead of time. We So to get a pie, you, you have to have a face-to-face -face or voice-to-voice -voice conversation. So we call them and ask them if they'd like a pie. And when they, we're asking them if they want a pie and they say yes, then that's when we say we, you can whip us up a referral right then. Right. And, um, and that works. I mean, we've gotten over 50 referrals every time we put that out. And it works so well that we're actually doing pies in July for Fourth of July this year, apple pies, and oh. we're going to do our new office, and we're going to do it again and offer again whipped cream with, with the apple pies, or maybe ice cream. We'll figure something out. We can make that work for them. Probably yeah. whipped cream. ice cream may be too hard to manage, and <laughs> all the all the melting in July. But it works really well, and it's you know it's it's something that's kind of corny, and they laugh when they say it. Um, but when they come even to the event and they see people walking with whipped cream, they're like, oh, and sometimes it, right there at the event, they can whip us up a referral and we're able to write down the contact information and give them a can of whipped cream. And it's just wonderful that, that they're, they love us and support us and we love them. And it's just a way to bring it to their attention because if you don't ask, sometimes they just forget. Right. They, they just think about their pie and what they're doing for Thanksgiving and they're so busy. Um, it's just a matter of bringing it forefront of their attention. Well, and just being corny about it, you know, oh, yeah. like giggling when you say it probably yes. gets a great response and it at least, uh, you know, enforces it in their mind that they're going to remember or think about it, you know, a little bit. Yes, more. yes. And they think it's corny and they love getting the whipped cream. And we do like a chili cook-off with our agents on the team. We all uh, do our favorite chili recipes and we have them come judge the chili rep. Uh, the cook-off, which is great, and it gets them to stay longer, they eat the chili, um, it's really kind of just a community, sit around, chit-chat, have a great time, um, and it's, it's, it's a great event, we love it. It's wow, I know, and the, I know that you'll, you are great at sharing all this, so you'll yes. share some of this. Yes, definitely we'll share, anybody wants to play a book or anything, we'll definitely, definitely would want to share that. So we now have, you've dominated your small town, You've built relationships in a database driven business. And in order to help all these families, you're continuing, continuing the search for talent. Yes. How does that look every day, every week, every month? What's your goal to add in new agents and, and everything? What's all that look like? Uh, so luckily that's Lori's department. So she's okay, good. more on that because I'm more still in the operations part of it and she is more in the, and the bringing talent and running the team. So she came from 23 years of banking. She was the, um, the bank manager in our local town for many, many years. And then she also um, was involved in a ton of community events. So she was involved in everything. And she like, she wasn't only involved, but she was involved and she was like, uh, she's the person that ran the events. So she's the, the person in charge of every meeting. And um, so I could definitely see talent oozing from this gal. And um, with my coaches prodding, he said, you know, you really should approach her and see if she has any interest in being on your team. And it worked out great that she was looking for a change in her life. And who would have guessed it after 23 years with one bank that she would even consider a change. And she did. And she's really flourished. And she has a great um, story that she tells of how well she likes this. And she's had that managing of people for all those years. And that's her cup of tea. And that's what, what floats her boat. So it's really great for her that be able to bring people in, interview them, um, look for talent, find good people that are good, good match. Um, what we've found the most is that, you know, looking for people that have that servant's heart and integrity and the customer service is way better. And we can teach everything else. We can teach how to write a contract. We can teach, you know, how to get on and look at our CRM and all that stuff. But if you don't have that servant's heart, um, that it, it's, it's really tough to teach that. So we, we have, you know, have seen that, but that's so important when we're looking for that. Well, I, I was going to say, obviously, um, being you obviously have an amazing culture to have 25 team members everyone buys into what you're selling right yes <laughs> so that has to be an a, an attribute to what you have done so what do you think is the one thing that you do that allows your community and your team to follow you 
So I think it's, I think it's integrity, doing the right thing, putting your client first. Those are all things that you can follow a leader, I believe, on doing. If, if you see someone that's just going to go out of their way to make certain the client's happy, and that is going to give back so much in a small town, you cannot be going around and harming people or not looking after their best interests because that's going to spread like crazy. And, you know, even in our business when we do everything right and everything turns out wonderful, there's things that happen outside of our control that, that they're frustrated with us. On. And so for us, it's just making certain that communication is there through every step of the process so that way they understand. And if they do get mad, just giving them grace and not judging them, always talking like they're in the room. So if, you know, because, you know, people sometimes can be at their worst in a real estate transaction. It's stressful moving your nest, you know, and being displaced. It's, it's something that's totally out of their court control and the whole the whole situation is out of everyone's control. I mean, I mean we can't control what the lender's gonna say, we can't control what the appraisal is gonna do. And so, you know, trying to give them that, that grace and, and love on them during that process and when they are maybe not making the best decisions because they're stressed out that we can help them see the light and guide them to what needs to happen on a transaction. And if they decide that it's fine. We don't want to buy this house anymore, or we don't want to deal with this. And it's fine. Let's help you get this help get you out of this. So it's always putting them first. And so, and then you get helps. It, it does. And it sounds so simple. Right. Yeah, it, it really is. And then and, the team first, you know, I, I want to make certain that everyone is happy and that, yeah. and that you know, no one's talking bad behind anybody's back and I'm not talking negatively about anybody on my team and that, you know, we're here to raise each other up, not tear each other down. And it's the same thing with our clients. Yeah. So what's next on the, uh, the list, the horizon for you? <laughs> Where are well, you going? Well, we'd like all of our team members, how we set our goals for the year is that we have each team member go and tell us what they would like to accomplish for 2018. And then we're able to add all those numbers up and come up with a number that is going to work for the team. So this year it's over a thousand. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, over a thousand. So we are excited to put over a thousand, it's like a thousand twenty-three or something to that nature uh, on the board and, and have everyone hit their goals. And so Lori and I, goal in all of this and we have a lead buyer specialist this year and and, and he's doing great jason is to help those agents obtain their goal so that way if everyone obtains their goal then we will obtain the company goal of doing over a thousand transactions so that would be wonderful so we would well, love to see that. so obviously you can't stay just in your little town are you needing to expand beyond your borders well what we've decided is that you know Lebanon, we'd love to get 50% market share in Lebanon. So that would, that would bring us about 600 transactions at, at Lebanon. Then if we go to Albany or Sweet Home or Corvallis or the adjacent areas, then we can pick up the extra 400 transactions from there. Albany is a town of about 60,000, I think, people over there. So they have a lot more transactions than we do here in Lebanon. So if we just even got a, you know, a little fraction of their transactions over there, we can, we can make that. So we're lucky enough that we have a business center in um, Albany, Oregon, and we have a market center in Corvallis, Oregon, and we have office space in both those two offices. And we have people that have roots in those areas that, um, that are taking uh, territory in those areas, and we're helping support that happen. So as we wrap up here, will you share with everyone what's on your business card that you... Uh give away. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you see me at family reunion or mega camp, yeah. uh, we always give away our business card. We make it um, specialized for that event. So that way I make certain I don't bring up any home because that's my goal. So give them all away. And the team all helps. We all have um, a, a challenge to give away our, our business cards. And on the business card, it says that if you come out to Oregon to give us a call and we'll give you a free fishing trip. And so, um, and that our card is a keeper. Don't not throw it away because we want to take you fishing. And I have a husband who loves to fish and he's got a nice little drift boat. We have a, a nice uh, river that comes through our town. Um, we have steelhead and salmon and we have another couple more um, rivers not too far away. So if you come out our way, give us a call. We'd love to give you a tour of our new office and take you fishing. I love that. So give everyone the best contact info so they can get in touch with you if they have any questions or have a referral for you. Yes, yes. So um, anything in the Lynn County, Oregon, which is the Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis area, um, my email address, it's Laura, 
at laurajalot.com and L-A-U-R-A and then Jalot is G-I-L-L-O-T-T.com. So anyhow, so it's a real easy way. You can call us. Um, we have someone here 24-7, it sounds like, here at our office, but the number is 541-451-2211. And um, they can call or send me an email if you'd like a copy of anything of her playbook that we're giving out. You are a giver and an amazing businesswoman. I am so honored to know you. <laughs> you too. Well, thanks for doing this with me. You did a great job. I'm so happy to, that I get to see you soon. So yeah. I will see you. And if you guys need anything from me, my number is 918-706-9845. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.